Hi everybody, it's me and I'm here with an overview of next month's great artist lesson. Our third through fifth graders will continue with the American Artist Series and they will be learning about a landscape realist painter by the name of Winslow Homer, who was technically untrained, but yet came, became a famous artist. We, I'm going to go a little bit over the presentation itself and give a couple notes there and then I'll talk about the uh, project. So let's start from the beginning as we do with every great artist and let's talk about his childhood. That's where we, where we begin in our presentation to the kids and we talk about how Winslow Homer was a typical kid who grew up in Boston, Massachusetts. His dad was a hardware merchant and he spent his days fishing. That's what he did. He wasn't one of these kids who, like a lot of the artists that we learn about, had aspirations of being an artist. He was just a typical kid fishing. When he was young, he did start his first art, his only real training, and his first uh, technically um, art-like job was he was an apprentice for a lithographer. By the time he was 20 years old, he got his very first job with a magazine called Harper's Weekly. And it was an American magazine that kind of documented the li life in America. And he would draw these uh, very sweet pictures of children in the countryside playing. Then the Civil War broke out and he went to the front lines as a correspondent for the Harper's Weekly Journal. And he would capture the life of soldiers, sometimes sweet moments, sometimes um, very caring moments. Basically, what his job was was to capture the life um, that a camp life of the soldiers. And so while he was doing that, um, he got to see all sorts of different sides of the American people. After the Civil War was over, he took off for the New England region and he spent his days camping and hunting and fishing and gathering. And he was gathering pictures of children again in the countryside, which is kind of like his main focus is gathering kind of country life and he continued to work with Harper's and um, draw these wonderful pictures. But what he would do as he was camping and fishing in the New England countryside, he would then, in the summer, he would spend his summers doing that, gather these drawings, and then in the winter, they would all turn into these really vibrant, beautiful paintings. His style, because remember he wasn't trained, so he, in some ways, was trying to cultivate his own personal style and in fact, he was kind of stubborn about it. He believed that um, you didn't have to go to school to be an artist and that you could just do it your own way, which is kind of the kind of paramount for him throughout his entire career and how he ended up just by himself doing it his way. But he did go to Europe. He went to um, uh, Paris for a year and he hung out with some impressionists, but they didn't influence his style at all. He maintained his own personal style, but while he was there, he was still working for Harper's uh, Weekly, but while he was there, he was, you know, drawing and painting landscapes and rural scenes. His favorite thing to draw and paint was peasant life, but while he was working in Paris for Harper's Weekly, his job was to capture drawings of Parisian life, and that's how he made money. Once he left Paris after that year, he came back to America, continued his uh, country uh, um, kind of peasant life drawings and paintings, and some critics loved it. They thought it was the best thing, and they thought it was beautiful. Now, there were other critics who found it to be too simple for them. And again, because he was such an independent artist, he didn't care what they said, he was gonna do it his way. Well, his work evolved, and it evolved a little slowly, probably because he didn't have any real technical training and he just, again, did it his way. He, it evolved slowly. He spent a little time in England, you mean? He spent a little time in England where he found himself attracted to the sea and the people who worked in the sea. He um, would create these wonderful and really emotional and impactful paintings of both men and women, uh, uh, the worker bees of the ocean and again those were sometimes for his own pleasure but then he also used those to sell to uh, Harper's Weekly as well. <clears throat> but his art changed and it went from this sweet country life to very large powerful paintings of the ocean 
seascapes. He wanted to record man's struggle against the force of nature. So he just created these very large, beautiful, and um, storytelling paintings of the ocean. For him, the ocean was his calling. And he found himself living in Prout's Neck. And he had, he lived Base, uh, he lived right up against the sea. His window was to the sea. And this is where Homer stayed. He, he loved the sea so much that he became antisocial and a recluse. He became a hermit. He didn't want to have anything to do with society anymore. His only pursuit was to capture the art that he saw in the sea. And that is what he's famous for. That is what he's known for. Once we've talked about him and how he lived and how he became the artist that he is, we then take some of the artist prints that we have hanging around the room and we have a little group discussion with the kids and have them have a moment, you know, only like five minutes will take, um, have a moment to look at those paintings and consider what is it that that painting is saying? What is the story that is in that painting? What colors do pop out at them? And what movement do they see in those paintings? Because his paintings had a lot of movement in it and the stories were grand. And in the uh, leader's guide that you have, there are notes on each painting so that you can kind of guide that conversation and guide what it is that they're seeing. So it kind of give you a little more education about that painting and make you sound like, you know a thing or two about Mr. Winslow. Um, once we've had that discussion, then we get into the project. And uh, that project, this project for uh, Winslow Homer, we are gonna be using oil pastels and watercolors. You are going to be passing out a piece of paper to a piece of watercolor paper to the kids. And the thing about watercolor paper is that there's a smooth side and a rough side. Now the smooth side is where the kids are gonna write their name. The rough side is where they're going to do their drawing and their painting on because that is what captures all the watercolor. So first we have them put their name on it and then we are gonna pass out some pictures of clipper ships. And we're gonna give the kids about 10 minutes to draw an outline of a clipper ship. And then we give them some oil pastels, some black and gray oil pastels where then they can color that clipper ship in. Now they can choose to just leave it as a single clipper ship or if they want to have a little more advancement in their art piece, they can create a shadow or a reflection that will be in the water uh, for the clipper ship. Now after they've done that, we, uh, after they've created their drawing and, and we give them the oil pastels to color in that drawing, we're going to ask them to pick a horizon point on the picture. And on the slide where we go over the directions with the kids, there are some examples of how a horizon, dependent on where you place it in or on a piece of paper, changes the perspective, changes the drama of a picture. So we're gonna ask them to decide where it is they want their horizon line to be. We wanna kinda of dissuade them from picking the middle of the paper. We wanna have a little more interest, so to move that horizon line up and down. Then once they've chosen the horizon line, we want them to think about their painting. So now they've, they've drawn the clipper ship and the next thing that they're going to do, they're gonna take watercolors to paint the sky and the water. But we want them to, to plan it out. We want, want them to consider what type of day, what time of day is it? What type of day is it? What's the weather like? What is the movement of the water going to look like? Is it a stormy day? Is it a calm day? Is it at dusk? Whatever it is, we want them to think about that first and then use their watercolor paints to color that in. Now, we also want to encourage them to make sure that they are, whatever they paint in the sky, maybe a little bit of that, those colors that they put in the sky are reflected in the, um, uh, in the water as well. Because there is a painting that you will discuss, which this is kind of emulating, which is Homer's uh, sunrise painting. I can't think of what it's called right now, sunrise painting. And so we, we're kind of emulating that style. So, and you'll see in the Homer, in Homer's painting that there are just little reflections of light that are in the water that are out of the sky. So that's pretty much the project. They use pastels, they draw the clipper ship, they paint their sky, they paint their ocean, and it should be colorful and vibrant with a lot of movement in it. And that is the lesson for next month. Of course, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or something's just not working right, by all means, please give me a jingle. 
or send me an email. I am here for you. Otherwise, good luck, happy creating, and I will see you in the hallways. Bye.